We're going to be examining some of his alleged miracles. If I had to be honest, when I was really into these sorts of things, it was really because even still, the eschatology thing is super sensational and people are always looking for some sign and something and this river's drying up and this is happening in this sign. And while he may have a growing following in Israel, as far as I can tell, the Messianic speculation is being Bruce Lawn. This conversation about the Messiah or the, the alleged Messiah it sent me down a rabbit hole today. Uh, we're going to be examining some of his alleged miracles. Okay, we're going to be examining some of the things that have been coming out of Israel. Now, if you watched my previous video on this topic, I told you guys that I was just in Israel, heard nothing of the guy. I was at the Western Wall, I had Shabbat dinner with some Orthodox Jews, had a great time, heard nothing of this guy, heard nothing of this guy. And some of you guys are like, well, you don't know as much through being there in person and having friends there as we do on the internet. Someone really left me that comment. I know you were there, and I know you have friends that live there, but we have the internet. <laughs> so anyway, I reached out to a friend of mine to do some research, okay? Now, we're going to look at this miracle here in a second because this is an interesting thing. So his name is, um, his name is the ya Yanu, how do you say it? The Yanu, Yanuku, Yanuka, Yanuka. And so he has some alleged miracles. We're going to be checking those out. But um, before we get into this alleged miracle, Scooch on over. We have to we have to address what I think is happening here in the zeitgeist. Some of you guys are really into Armageddon apocalyptic thinking, and you're just on edge waiting for the world to end. Ya nuka, ya nuka. Uh, some people are into that sort of thing, right? Like people love like the rapture. People love like being on edge. People love these things. I get it. I don't know why. I don't I don't know why. I think it's if I had to be honest, when I was really into these sorts of things. It was really because I didn't want to do the hard work of experiencing and developing myself on this side of eternity. I just was like, well, Jesus is going to come back. He's going to fix it all, right? Instead of being like, no, 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 I'm called to be hit the hands and feet of Jesus on this side of eternity. And let me make the most of my time, talent, and treasure. I just instead obsessed with the rapture and left behind and 9-11 and all the stuff, right? That, 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 that's where I was. Maybe you're not like that. Even still... The eschatology thing is super sensational, and people are always looking for some sign and something, and this river's drying up, and this is happening, and this sign. Uh, this is what Dr. Michael Brown replied to me. If you guys don't know who Dr. Michael Brown is, your sources matter. Dr. Michael Brown has been in the Lord for 50 years. He's actually a Messianic Jew. He has done a lot of work in Israel, uh, been there a ton of times. He has a radio show. He has a YouTube channel. He uh, holds his degree from NYU, original Hebrew, right? Like this isn't like a mail-in diploma. He really is. He really is that guy. And so I reached out to him. I said, hey, Dr. Michael Brown, did you ever do a video on the Yakunaka? That's how I'm going to say his name now. Yakunaka. Character, he seems to be a child prodigy, but allegedly people are claiming he is more. So I'm just starting with my due diligence. He says, I researched him a little, and yes, Yakunaka means child prodigy. Means child prodigy. The, the actual word means child prodigy, according to someone that is Jewish and knows Hebrew. Um, from what I could tell, most of the stir is from Christians hearing about him. Now, Christians wouldn't do something so silly as to assign a hysterical, paranoid title to someone that you know, Jewish people themselves don't acknowledge as, as the Messiah. Christians would never do that. And while he may have a growing following in Israel, as far as I can tell, the Messianic speculation is being overblown. Hey, you may not know I make music, but I have a brand new song that just came out. Here's a quick preview. I went from being a porn addict to sharing the gospel with a porn actress who was criticized for being low status by the same only fans who treat us so lavish i'm confused i swear y'all thought he did doing podcasts hot takes he still can rap now this is my first song that i've released in over a year so i need you to go to spotify apple music or wherever you consume music and stream too soon right now add it to your favorite playlist share it with a friend so hit the link in the description or go to ruslantothemoon.com to stream too soon now i'll see you over there ooh, ooh. Oh, they got me with the dramatics you know that a moment cannot be
but I definitely plan to talk about him on the air one of these days. So Yaku Naka is a child prodigy, and the Jewish people do not actually see him as divine, which, by the way, you know, Jews don't all view the, the Messiah as divine. Two, they, there is no real Messiah-like celebration of him, from, as far as I can tell. Three, the Messiah is supposed to be a military leader. That's why they missed it with Jesus the first time, right? They were looking to be set free from Rome. And Jesus came not as a lion and a warrior, but as a humble lamb to deal with the sin issue that people had. He has a photographic memory. He can memorize the Torah, yada, yada, yada. But there is the issue of some apparent miracles. Okay, so I got I went to, I found his actual YouTube channel, which by the way, it's hilarious that he has a social media presence. <laughs> the Messiah got 30K subs. The, 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 the alleged Messiah has 30,000 subs, right? Uh, and so I just went down, just went down this rabbit hole and, uh, and I figured, why not, right? Because some of you guys are really convinced that uh, this is the beginning of the end, which I, I, I personally find it hilarious, if I'm honest. But let's check this out. So this is directly from his YouTube page. Is directly from his YouTube page. What actually happened was, at an event that I can't shake of myself until this very day, on the 31st of the month, I paid a visit to the Rav. While in the midst of a very sad story, my sister was terminally ill. They discovered cancer in her lung, and she underwent difficult treatments. About a month and a half ago, I sat with a good friend, and we spoke about a business affair. I don't know how it happened, but he mentioned this Rav that he knew of called Hagun Torah something genius. I'm very curious to know what this Rav was, and when I got that evening, I immediately did a... The Yakunuka suddenly saw a treasure of information, including videos. I opened one of the videos, which fascinated me. I listened to his lectures into the night and fell asleep with them in the background. The next day, I informed the person who introduced me to the Rav and told him about the lectures I heard. And on the way, I mentioned another issue regarding a medical problem my sister had. My sister developed lung cancer. And I asked his advice and asked if he could obtain a meeting with me and the Rav to receive a blessing. He immediately arranged a meeting with the Rav for me. Before the meeting, I was incredibly excited because we actually confronted him several days past and I accumulated information that deeply moved me. So he gets this information that's moving him. This is not just another regular day. I listened to all sorts of rabbis, but I heard it was totally different. The amount of information he knows. It's not something I can describe in a few minutes. One simply has to hear. He touched me on an unfathomable level. He swept me to places that I can't even express as of now. So I told him what happened to my sister. He asked me to pass on a number of instructions, hone in a specific dietary sources, read a prayer from the Zora, wean off of cigarettes. You, you don't say. You don't say wean off of cigarettes. Yeah, okay. I told my sister about the entire experience I had with the Rav and the instructions he sent her. And I passed on the primary advice, which is the prayer from the Zohar. And I requested, actually demanded that she meticulously follow these instructions. A number of days ago, she had a follow-up test in order to condition of the lung tumor. And yesterday, we received the news that there simply is no tumor. The tumor disappeared as if it was never there. We are all very emotional, happy, and ecstatic. To such a degree that I just had to come today, 21st century, to the Rav to share the good news with him. Because we had a feeling that he has something to do with this. Superhumanly. I don't know if superhuman, this is my feeling. Therefore, I came to express this. And thank him for everything we experienced. And this is good news. This is the ya The Yanuka! Okay, so that is the the one of, I guess there's five miracles. And so I I uh, I don't know what to make of it, right? Like, it, it maybe it's a real miracle, right? That doesn't mean that um, it... it means he's the messiah right and even if some people worshiped him as the messiah that doesn't mean that right if he did a miracle maybe he did but usually with miracles there's some sort of bona fide hey we need proof evidence of the sort right so it's kind of weird that he's testifying for his sister where's his sister at you know um and then the instructions you know i, I think this is another one of those 
making a, a mountain out of a molehill type of situations. Uh, I don't think this guy is the Messiah, the false Messiah. I don't think this is something to worry about. I think the ultimate application that I think um, we should have is that there are going to be false messiahs and there are going to be people who can do signs. And not all of those signs are necessarily from God. And that's we know that from Scripture, right? But even still, I don't really understand the... I mean, no, I do. I do. I understand the obsession of end days, fear, all these different things. Because, again, when I was in it, it was to relinquish myself of the process of walking through sanctification. Because if I'm obsessed with the end of days, then I don't have to actually... I don't actually have to do anything, right? Because Jesus is going to come and fix it all. And he will come. He will come back. I believe Jesus is literally going to come back. Hey, this clip is from our daily after-party stream. If you enjoyed it, consider signing up for our Patreon community for only $5 a month where you get access to the replays of our daily after-party streams as well as the uncut extended versions of our podcast, Discord access that's private, and a discount code for our merch store only five dollars a month and ultimately it's the best way to help us contextualize the gospel of jesus using media podcasting and of course youtube the link for that is in the description or in the pinned comment the perks are amazing you should get on there it's only five dollars a month i'll see you over there all right peace